folks Come on. For the OGs that did a dime Came back around on parole uh. For the homegirls with the scrap game Lil' homies that gang bang From Pelican Bay to YA Rearrange your mind frame Yeah, I know what you been through uh. Shit, you had to go tend to Yo mama gave birth on the turf I, know I was the founder I created Conan Parker in my mother's garage I had a lot of, you know, lifting weights And I was on sport They started calling me Big Miz This is only the beginning. So look, Draws is having all this money hustling. Then Draws catches this case in 91 doing a robbery. What happened was, this I'm going to tell you. So what happened was in uh, 89. 89, that's when them people hit. And they hit 21 of the homies. That's what peanut them went to jail. So, Peanut, Shorty, Miles, they, they, they get to get Miles, and they get Belly. They get 21 dudes, and they're trying to get all of them to say something about, about drugs. Shit come out of the newspaper, but by the other name, though. And so... I ended up paying for all their lawyers. But before that, I had read Malcolm X's autobiography. I was driving from Minnesota to Chicago. I read Malcolm X's autobiography. When I read the autobiography, I cut my hair off. I was through hustling. I wouldn't stay in Chicago. I wasn't talking to homies no more. I was reading all that. Then Monk get killed. When Poochie got killed, That's when the homies like Stone, like, you gotta come back. And I'm like, man, I'm on this black shit right now. Stone, like, I don't give a fuck. You gotta come back. So, but I was on the run too at the same time. So Stone was like, come back home. I snuck back in here. And then when I snuck back in here, I picked Stacy and Michael up and I sent them to Chicago. And then, you know, whatever had, you know what I mean? And whatever went down, went down. And I left and went back to Chicago. So now I'm not hustling. So I told her in order, I told her out of order. Why I had quit hustling and all the homies, um, Rico, Rico, Miles, me and Belly had talked about me not, I wasn't gonna grind no more after I read Michael Mike's autobiography. Then that's when they hit. Cause I was in Chicago when he actually hit them. So I had told her out of order. I was actually in Chicago and they hit all of them. And everybody got popped and went to jail. And so I ended up paying for all of them. I ended up paying to get all them lawyers. And I really kind of would mess my little bag up. So after them, after, after Belly went to jail, no, Belly got away. Miles got away. I'm telling Miles, leave the town alone. This is how Miles ended up doing 22 years. So I'm gone. I ain't messing with no more. I'm really living in Chicago. But I'm living off of the money that I already made. You know what I mean? I'm paying mom's bills. I got my two little brothers in private school. I mean, I'm just like. So what? This? So you you're not hustling no more. Nah, I wasn't you're, hustling. You're no living more. off of old money. Living off old money. And then a lick falls on your on your lap. No, 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 no. I end up coming back. I end up coming back from Chicago, coming back out here, and um, I had bought some property in Chicago with my dad. So my wife was homesick. She stressed me out to go home. She wanted to come back to LA. We ended up coming back to LA, me, her, and Michael. So I'm in LA. I really ain't, I ain't, I ain't trying to hustle like that no more. So the only thing I know how to do is really just the gun. So I'm thinking like, well maybe if I just rob the dope dealers, it ain't selling dope. So I'm thinking like. <laughs> the Jedi mind trick. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what really what I did. I went back to the first thing I knew. My first robbery I ever did, I did in this alley at that corner. Me and Slim, first robbery we ever did. We walked from Arlington, walked down to that corner and did that robbery. So that was my thinking, like, shit, if I'm robbing, I ain't got to have no ulcer from selling dope, hoping the dope make it there, hoping I get my money back. Only thing I do is got to worry about the niggas who want to kill me after I rob them. Well, everybody wants to kill me anyway. Well, let me ask you, back then the word was that was somebody else's lick. 
Yeah, it was uh, um, it was uh, but what it was is me and me and my crimey, we had showed some money. He had come give me. He had said, how much the lick is? How much we trying to show? So I put up 150. He put up 150 to go show the people the lick. But it was, but it was, a, it was the feds. And uh, from my understanding, after we found out later, somebody else set them, set them, was setting them up. They didn't know I was involved. I wasn't. So we was over here with Al. We go from there. We get the call. Niggas, the first niggas who seen it was like, nah, we ain't fucking with it. Where's this taking place at? On um, Manchester. It ended up taking place on Manchester and Sepulveda. In the little shopping center in the back. In Westchester? In Westchester. Manchester, Sepulveda. So I think Mac was was trying to lead you into. Did BJ have anything with that? Mac? BJ is the one who set it up. Okay. BJ the one who set it up. BJ had put it put the play together through my crimey, and later on it turned out that he was bad. So that was a faulty lick from the gate. It was a it was a it was a setup from the gate. The only difference, the only thing we don't know is if if it was just a, a robbery. Cause it really was a robbery. It wasn't a, 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 I don't think it was a, um, I don't think it was a case at all. It was a robbery. Cause they didn't have no dope, no gun. They didn't have no dope, no nothing. They didn't have nothing. They was really just coming to get us. They didn't charge us for four days. So what did you get arrested for? What did they end up charging you with? They ended up charging us with robbery and possession. But we never, they never, have, they never had no, drug, no drugs whatsoever. So look, we stumble across a newspaper article on that arrest. Mm-hmm. And they got you labeled as the leader of the Rolling Sixties. <laughs> I don't know where that shit came from. And that's what I wanted to ask you. Where did that come from? I don't know, man. That shit came from. I couldn't even tell you to be honest with you. That was what they were saying because they always said Stone was the leader. And to me. Stone was to me. Stone was was a nigga I looked up to. So I guess that could have came because we was giving Stone so much respect and Stone had so much respect for me, but it could never be a leader. You know what I mean? Someone gave LA Times that information. Who did that? Man, it's kind of like it said a bunch of people who names we gave it. I know what I think, but I ain't going to say right now, but. It was kind. Of, it was a. It was a federal investigation that was going down, and they was trying to hit us with the Rico Act at the time. So a lot of dudes was working with them, trying to pin me and Stone as the the in fact people who was running the hood at the time. So, and I and I and I know what happened. I know Stone knew of the investigation through his attorneys before I caught my case which was the importance of, uh, of Andre Sparks because they had Stone name, my name, Sparks name. And, and so Sparks caught a murder and went to jail first. He was the first one. This guy we just talked to. Yeah, Andre Sparks, that's what he did 28 years for. And some shit he didn't even do. So he went first, then I left, then Stone left. You know, no, then Stone was killed while, while I was gone. Okay, so how much time did you end up getting sentenced to? I got sentenced originally to 56. Then they had to rechange my recent. First thing they did was resentence me to 23. Then I fought that down and ended up doing 12 and 12 years, 12 years and nine months. So now you land in the penitentiary. What what prison did you land in first? Calipat, um, Calipat, because the reception was to hatch me. And what was the dynamics of the prison when you landed there? As far as prison gangs, street gangs, who was on your yard? When the you Blue Nose was there. <laughs> Wasn't none of these niggas there. <laughs> no, no, you know who was there? Uh, 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 uh. Sumar was there. Because that was my first time being Sumar. Sumar was there. No, I'm trying to take that back. Because I may have said that wrong. 
I think Sumar came after it was here. Uh, 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 uh. What's his name from Nana was here? Was here. It's only one. It was only like what's name CCO was was the CCO was there, and then at that time, niggas was really hiding their affiliation. <laughs> niggas was hiding their affiliation at that time. Talking about their prison the gang, the prison affiliation. They was hiding it, and I got a tour with, I got a tour with the Blue Notes, when I kind of like when I first got there because it was funny how the nigga Turtle, um, Turtle, was from, Turtle was from, from Avalon. And um, and um, happy, and great. So what they was doing was, as soon as you get to the yard, they running paperwork on the on all the crypts that's coming in. They pushing the blue no no blue no car hard. So when I get there, um, this is ninety one ninety two. Yeah. And blue notes is still up and yeah, running. Man it was they pushing. Have... They was pushing the whole. They was they was pushing the paperwork hard. Did you get an envelope? Hell no! Nah. I got a tour with him. We ended up we ended up getting a tour with him. So when I first get, it's funny how they approach me. So you know when you first get to the yard, you know your reputation is there already. But these niggas don't realize that my reputation, I guess, it had changed over to like somebody who was hustling or somebody was getting some money or or whatever had you. I don't know what my reputation was because when I get there, I'm by all the homies, all our homies. I'm looking out for him. Andre Sparks was there. My stepfather was there. Hank was there. Uh, um, and Blue. And they had our, Blue had got a tour with uh, C Dog from, 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 from the Tanner. And um, so when I get there, I'm looking out for all them. And I'm, you know, getting niggas TVs and all that stuff. My package come. I got five niggas getting packages on the yard. This nigga, so I never forget it. We go on the yard. No, we are. The nigga Happy come tell me, Happy was in my building, he say, Turtle wanna holler at you. And I'm like, this nigga wanna holler at me for? And I'm like, man, tell the nigga I holler at him when I holler at him. You know what I'm saying? I come out, I go straight to the basketball court. I already know the demonstration, but it was funny to me though. So, we walk in the track, and he's sitting on the track, he kneeling, on the, he kneeling down the track. He's like, man, let me holler at you. you. I'm like, I stop back and I holler at him. He say, uh, I squat down and we talk. He's like, man, what's up, mommy? You know, you know, nigga, just, you know, I just want to introduce you to the structure of the pen, and you know, you know, uh, um, you know, I ain't gonna ask you if you affiliated with nothing, and uh, but you know, uh, and he say, uh, he say, yeah, but you know, you know, when homies is on the streets, they one thing, but in here is a different thing. I never get this. This, this nigga tell me, and I'm looking at this nigga like, he like, yeah, but you know, niggas be looking out, you know, are we Crips? We represent the Crips in here, you know what I'm saying, and. And you know, saying, you know, y'all got y'all car, you know, but niggas have cars. And I'm like, man, look, man, I really don't care what, what y'all do. I'm glad that y'all moving what y'all doing. I only care about three things my hood, my family, and my money. And I said, as long as niggas ain't got no problem with that, man, on neighborhood, I'm good. I hit him up like that. I got up and start walking, <laughs> and start walking the track. But I don't know. The nigga sitting the nigga mic at me. The nigga Mike from uh, Mike from Mike from Groove. This, this nigga was from Groove. He said this nigga at me, but he one of their sleepers though. I don't know this nigga one of their sleepers though. But this nigga come in and just start woofing at me one about this nigga with about six months. To send this nigga at me because now I done took over all the all the all the you know all the trapping on the yard. You know I didn't I didn't because the nigga with the money go come in and take everything. Mm -hmm. I didn't got all the staff. I didn't got all of them. I'm like, look, man, I'm going to put y'all on the payroll. And I'm really just hustling just because I'm a hustler. It's just in my blood. It ain't even like I need nothing. I done looked down all the routes into the spot. So now they won't in on the routes. And I'm like, look, man, you can buy in. I can't give you nothing because it is going to look funny, though. You know what I'm saying? Because all my people CCOs. You know what I'm saying? What am going to look like ain't you? But I ain't tell him that. Makes sense. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I ain't, but I'm nothing though. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm from the Rolando. Right. And now we about 10 deep on the yard now. So now I'm waiting on the nigga that killed Stone to come.
So we at we at Calipat, and I know it's only four place. It's only four places he gonna come from that reception center, and Calipat gonna be one. So I'm waiting on Calipat be your. Cause I'm for the killers, nigga. They kill Stone. They, you know the nigga Ant. So I'm really just trying to stay there. So make a long story short, he ended up sending the dude at us. We ended up getting into it with them. And I ended up finding out maybe some years later that it came from, from that situation, that it was really some bitterness from dude. And, and then I ended up, you know, we ended up demoing on, on that, you know what I mean? Did Ant ever hit the yard? Ant hit the yard. He got stabbed like, he got stabbed uh, something like 80 some, 80 some times, stabbed and cut up. He was paralyzed for a minute. Did the Crip regime that controlled the yard? They well, they had a problem with They came and was like telling us what they can do or we can and can't do it. I'm like, well, you know, that's all good. I want to throw a name out there. So you tell me, tell me if you know this guy. Baby Crazo from Raymond. My celly. Crazo told us a story in the cell about a radio. Radio with a screen. Well, I had my dope. You in came it? from another prison. You had a radio with a TV screen on it or something. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was cleaning up one day. <laughs> I think he wanted to hear that story. I don't remember. You got to tell me. He said he, he said he broke your radio. Oh, he did. Your your TV screen, and you came to the cell, and you was mad. <laughs> I probably was. I don't know. <laughs> He said, mean, he said he just rolled over and went to sleep because you used to do karate in the cell. Yeah, I used to do, I used to do 500 kicks a day, man. <laughs> Every morning, man, no matter what, I get up, I do my workout. It's mandatory. Right? Mandatory. You know what's so funny, girl? My father think we supposed to remember the littlest things in the yeah, world, I nigga. I remember shit that I don't remember certain shit. You know what I'm saying? All I remember is Crazy told us that story. I know. So. Oh, did he? Yes. Yeah, but I remember. But I wanna, I wanna, I wanna another crazy old story that leads back into the streets when you get parole, because he says when he sees you on the streets, putting together all these moves in the industry and putting your things together, he said he watched you in the cell, right, right, right on read it. books it yeah. and write yep. down every plan, yep. goal to goal to goal, in the prison cell. I did. So when he sees you on the street, he was amazed that you actually put that plan in motion. He was my celly when I came with the whole unique name. U-N-E-E-K, he was my celly then. He was my celly. And, uh, um, he, he, yeah, he was my celly for a while, man. I mean, it's crazy because I see people who I did time with and they remember that. They remember that. I wrote all this out. Everything I'm doing from developing option, from the sports, from uh, um, doing the movies, all I wrote all that out. From this interview, the books, I wrote all that out. I had already, I had already, but the thing is, and I tell kids all the time, it wasn't no guarantee or it wasn't no line of when it was gonna happen. I just stayed true to it. I never even really was, 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 was sure if I was gonna be able to do all the stuff that I was gonna be able to do. But I just prepared myself for it. I did the work, uh, um, I studied. I couldn't spell work for shit. I can't spell nothing to this day. So I asked this nigga, how you spell this? How you spell that? And I'm just writing it, you know what I mean? But I just always felt like, and that's another reason why I never got no tattoos. I always felt like, you know what I mean? I felt like it was gonna be something better. I was gonna be reaching for a lot better and reaching for bigger. Did the Nation of Islam create that? teachings for you to start all these different businesses? No, nah, my dad was. Okay. My father was, uh, my father was the light between me being somebody who wanted to do his own business. My father, when I went to, when I went to go live with my father in Chicago, he used to get up in the morning at four in the morning and go to work at four in the morning for the white man and then go to his shop. I mean, then he had his own construction company, um, Eugene Henley, uh, uh, cement and remodeling. And then he had a store. And the stores where all the hustling went down. You so know what I'm saying? it was in your DNA. It was in my DNA, man. That's my good. pops didn't sleep, man. My pops got up at four in the morning. So when I seen that, when I seen what my pops was doing, that really just gave me the light to like to, to get it. He didn't get high. He didn't drink. I never seen him high. I never seen him drink. I never seen him do none of that. He just would get up in the morning. He get up in the morning, four in the morning. I help him move. Whatever we had to move his equipment around because he had to move his equipment a certain way because people try to steal it. So he'd block it in with his trucks and then when he ready to move it out, I go back in and go to sleep or get ready to go to school 
And Pops go do it. By the time I get out of school, he'd be picking me up to go do some construction work on his own. And then from there, we had the store. So from watching your father, you do not have to consume these certain bad habits. And no, that started with my uncles out here. That's, that bad habit started with certain people in my family who had bad habits. Uh -huh. I seen that. I seen that early, you know what I mean? I seen, I seen bad habits with the big homies. Right, right. You know what I mean? Even that started from drinking. Hmm. You know, I seen, and I- You wanted no parts of that. Yeah, and I wanted no part. And then I, and I, I watched a lot of interviews, or Kid Mac interviews, and what I don't never see is a lot of these older dudes taking responsibility hmm. for younger dudes feeling like we didn't have to listen to them. And then people always ask why I got a lot, a little respect for my, a lot of respect for my little homies, and and, and the only reason I wouldn't have respect for my big homie, for my young, from my little homies, is because it would have to be a, another older, bitter nigga to to say something to them about me, because everybody is gonna look up to somebody who's doing it the right way, yeah. who's trying to do it. Now with, with me, it was different, and Cam Mac contested this. We had an era in our neighborhood where. Damn it, all the old niggas was on crack cocaine. It wasn't nobody for us to say, okay, you know, we're going we gonna to look up to you, we're going to look up to this, we're going to do that. And if they wasn't on crack cocaine, they was in the pen with a bunch of time. And that was systematically planned by the white men. So we wouldn't have no guidance. Agreed. But that wasn't our fault that we grew up at 17, 18, to get into 20, and we really had to speak and move for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? But you don't never hear a lot of these old dudes that be doing these interviews taking responsibility for that. No, and, 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 and that, and that Rock left at, see what you left at what? 17, 18? 12, 12. Hold on a minute, Draw. So you made a good point when I was asking you about that leadership question because you kind of came up right in that time and filled that void with crackhead big homies yeah. and homies doing all these life sentences and then here comes Big U filling right. that void. And you're going to always hear about me when it comes to little homies. They're going to always say I helped the little homies. You ain't never gonna hear none of my little homeboys who grew up in my area say that I took nothing from them, sent them to go do no lick and bring me no money back. I didn't do that. I didn't send niggas to go do no bank licks. I didn't send no homies to go do none of that. If anything, I did the lick and I'm bringing it back to the team. I never did that. None of my homies, I never even set up a Thunderdome. You know what I'm saying? But I would discipline our homies if they was wrong. You know, I did believe in that. Right, believe so. You know what I'm saying? I believe that if you was wrong and you didn't stay down, you ran out or you did something wrong, then you was going to get disciplined. But as, but, but as far as like what I don't hear from a lot of old niggas and what Rocky was going to say is I don't hear them niggas claiming their responsibility. I don't hear niggas claiming. Cause, and I say this, if all the niggas who claim to be this and that, G's and all that, if they would have been what they were supposed to be, I could have never became me. And, and I I'm too much younger point. than these niggas to become One me. One question, Big if you had a table, four eight trays, four sixties, who would you see at that table from both sides to come to a consensus? Or if there could be one? Well, it would, it would, you know what? I would have to say it would have to be the decade. It would have to be in a certain era. Like right now, right now I couldn't tell you nobody from, from the gangsters, but I could tell you, I mean, the ones that I know I mess with, okay. I wouldn't want to put their name on this because they may have problems. Okay, gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They may have problems in their own neighborhood because when we did the thing with Nipsey, I know a lot of that fallback on a lot of the ones who who came over there who tried to, you know, amend. Let we me, didn't let have me it. Let me pause you on that because we're going we're gonna to get into Nip. I want to get into the year you paroled and the year you executed that prison plan in the motion on the streets? Ha uh, Well, as far as me executing, de developing an option, I started that from the jail. I didn't wait. Um, my stepfather, um, Donald Ray Evans, was the first one to file for the corporation for me for ex Fitness Federation Network. So when I came home, I had already had it filed a year. So then when I, when I, when I came home and started moving, and to start doing things as ex Fitness Federation Network, I, when I, then I, when I filed for my classification to be a nonprofit, it was um, another one of the homies had an organization that was so similar to mine. It's called Ex Offenders, um, something like Ex Offenders Association, or something. And I didn't want to be associated with him, 
So I then took on the DBA as developing option. That's the reason why developing option is not, uh, 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 doesn't have a, 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 a federal number, tax ID number. So we do, we only do business as developing option, but it's recognized as nonprofit in the state of California. What, what, what year did you parole? I paroled in 2004. When did you start getting into the music business? That again, I was into that before I came on. I was doing parties. Um, that's when like Bear Claw, and that's really like how me and Bear Claw started bonding because he was so tight with my little brother. We was doing parties. I was doing parties before I paroled with Corrupt, and uh, when my little brother got killed, Corrupt and Kitty Rock picked me up uh, in a safe. My wife picked me up from prison, but Corrupt and Kitty Rock came to my house on 103rd, and uh, they took me out, and uh, they gave me some money that Sugar sent me, and uh, so that, that's what established the relationship between me and Sugar, because Corrupt was still over there, and Kitty Rock was on his way leaving the Suge situation, but he just stayed there long enough to make sure that I, you know, I got something to come home to. And then Keita Rock and Suge was kind of like, like beefing at the time. Wasn't Harry on locked up with you? Yeah, I did um, two years with Harry O. And, and it's funny because I always say that Harry O gave me my book knowledge. Harry O gave me the information out the books that I needed to, to, to be able to forge and do something different. And then Suge gave me the ability to, to do the application of, of, of actually being in meetings, hearing how people talk, hearing the verbs being used in exchange. Harryo gave me, Harryo let me read Easy E first contract. He let me read Dr. Dre and them contracts. He had all that shit. And he was just showing me how, like, this is what you're supposed to look for. He was the first one. He gave me a, he gave me a book, uh, Everything You Need to Know About the Music Business by Kashif. Then I ended up later on doing 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 business with the attorney who had write that book, and uh, Jerry Greenberg. Okay, so look, Gary Greenberg. It's a Gary good book. Greenberg. We're paroled now, 2004, and you're roaming the streets looking for artists. No, um, I get out in 2004. Uh, I'm dealing with corrupt and um, corrupt finna do a show in Long Beach. Daz Nim is sending out word that they gonna demo. So we ended up, me, Shug, me, Shug, um, I wanna say La, uh, Shortstop, TD, uh, AKA TD and somebody else, we, we are born in Hollywood. We jump out the crown, Don Juan, Don Bishop Juan. The pimp dude? The pimp dude. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, jump out there call. Right, <laughs> John Juan pisses wine. I tell Don Juan, since, since Sugar, she and Snoop a message, tell Snoop to call. Me. From there, Snoop called Corrupt, which ended up leading into, leading into the dog pound getting back together. And Corrupt leaving, Corrupt leaving, the corrupt leaving, you no, know, they had the Western Conference, and then corrupt ended up going with the dog pound, leaving Death Row, and then when when corrupt left Death Row, I said I didn't want to mess with that situation no more, and then that's when I started going to go look for artists in the hood. Okay. So I already had been home maybe three, four years. I was off, and I was I was still on parole. I was still on parole. Who who introduced you? To your little homeboy Nip. Shortstop. T D. T D was T D was the first one to tell me to go get Nip. And what was so special about Nip back then in 2004? Nip was a hustler. Nip was a uh, um and then I didn't even go get Nip. Keep it 100. Cause how it was is Bear Claw had a studio in the Overhills. So I would go up to there in Bear Claw. And I would just mess with certain homies. And so uh, TD was always saying, get nip, get nip, get nip. But I'm still looking at all the homies to see who I want to get this opportunity to. You know what I mean? And so eventually, I, I get everybody a shot. We all met. We all had met at, uh, uh, I want to say we came over Cobby House in the 40s. Anyway, that's where we all had met. And then we, 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 we spin from there. I end up, we end up, we end up with Nip 
in all of them because Nip had the Slossy Boy Records. That was Nip thing. He had a he had an album with Slossy Boy Records, but he hadn't incorporated. He had just got the uh, the, the name, the DBA. And I'm like, look, I got to show you how to incorporate that because it's not finished. So when you when you met Nip, he was still an underground rapper on the street. He hadn't even put no music out really yet. He just, I think he was just recording and uh, um, had some CDs he was trying, he was past now. He had no video, he had nothing. He had absolutely nothing. And I think uh, when we started moving with Nip, shortly after we started moving with Nip. When you um, say we, who are you talking about? What happened was when I got Nip, I vastly found out that nobody wanted to see Big U really in the industry like that. And then with a crib. So I, st I, I, I was calling everybody. I was calling, I was calling, uh, Shug was giving me recording time. Sugar gave me some recording time for the Slauson Boys. We were going to do the Slauson Boys with, uh, 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 with Kabi, uh, Cousin Capone, and all of them. Sugar was giving me recording time. So I was getting recording time from everybody before I just actually went and got nipped. I had uh, um, got all the homies recording time, and we was trying to put some music together. And I was letting Suge hear it. Suge was like, nah, this ain't right. You got to go in and have him create certain kind of music. And then Claw's moving at the same time. So make a long story short, we ended up, I ended up through maybe four or five months just focusing on Nip. Where does Steve Lobel fall into the equation? Oh, that's where I was at. So I had to go get Steve because they wasn't letting me move who is Steve? Steve was my partner, man. Steve was, Steve was was married to my wife's cousin. Steve was married to my wife's cousin, and that's how I knew Steve. So when I was moving with Nip, and we was have we was hitting so many bridges because people were scared of the Big U name, the Big U reputation. I brought Steve on, but before I went to Steve, I went to Breon uh, Prescott because Breon Prescott was the first one to fly me anywhere dealing with money, Breon and Poon. So when I first wrote, the first thing I ever did in music was Poon and Breon Prescott flew me to New York. And I was I, don't, I probably had been out maybe a month, maybe a month, maybe maybe two months. When you say they were scared of you, was it the reputation of the hood or the individual? What? It was the reputation. People, I tell people all the time, it's the reputation of the hood. Because when people think about the 60s, you always think about whatever name you know. You know, I'm not nor statistic to think niggas is really worried about Big U. Because I ask niggas all the time, tell me something I did. They can't tell me nothing I did. So why is your name on the top of the totem pole then?